know that uh, uh, like for some it might be early morning, um, but hopefully you will be awake. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm super excited to be here. It's my first international talk, so I'm even happier more uh, that it's in Italy, in Milan, because i gelati italiani sono migliori del mondo. Hopefully I didn't make any mistake. Uh, if I may just, you know, catch me later and teach me Italian. Uh, so, my name is Agnieszka Naploha. I know it's tough to pronounce it, but you can call me Aga. If you have any other questions related to UX, design, or whatever, you can catch me on Twitter. And uh, feel free to use, yes? Okay. Okay, sorry. That's better, that's better, that's better. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so if you don't hear me at the back, just wave. I will try to fix it. Okay, so maybe I should look at you, not the slide. So feel free to use the hashtags ux 4 devs and CoMotion. And um, before I start, I should introduce myself. So who am I? I work for Adobe uh, in Warsaw, in Poland, as a visual designer. I should stay in here as a visual designer and front-end developer. So I do both things, but my career wasn't that straight. So firstly, I started with development, so I was junior, uh, let's say, web developer. But later, uh, I discovered UX and was really fascinated by this. So I switched my job to junior UX designer. But later, I, find, I, I found that um, combining these two areas uh, gives me um, the, the highest rate of satisfaction. So you know who am I and now I should know who are you. So please wave your hands if you're a developer. Whoa, nice. Um, any designers in the room? Okay, quite a few. So I'm nervous because you know you'll be judging me later. Uh, any other people? Wait, wait. Yeah, oh, Kasia. Okay, so Kasia is a product owner. <laughs> Other people. Uh, okay, any front end developers? Okay, and back end? Yeah, so let's say 50 50. Okay, so who uh, works for a startup? Okay, or, and for a big company, corporation? Okay, and who have ever uh, worked with UX designer? Okay, cool. So, a couple of days ago, I had a presentation on Meetup in Warsaw, which is called Design Practice. And I was um, giving presentation about the, like, like the areas of development and the, design and the design. So, I was trying to convince designers that they should learn to code. And you can uh, probably heard this question somewhere because it was vastly covered in the, uh, on the internet, on the blogs, should designers code? And there is one funny website. Um, I don't know the address, because, but it's something with, yeah, should designer code? When you enter on the website, it's like huge text, no. But I don't agree with that. So now you can imagine the designer's reaction when you are talking about the, the development stuff. So it's always like, me developing stuff, like, typing strange green signs on the black screen, like looking from 80s, like no way, no way, I'm, I'm not going to learn to code. But uh, one guy during this meetup uh, asked me, well, you said that designers should code, and what the other way around? So should developers design? And now you can rema imagine your reaction or reaction from your friends, and it's like, well, me pushing pixels in a Photoshop? Gosh, it's totally no me. I don't want to double myself and discussing it with other designers. Like, what? Yeah, so we have a problem because we have uh, designers and we have developers and they should learn to communicate each other because the success of the product usually uh, lies in the good relationship with designers and developers. So, um, in my talk, I'm not going to force you to do this, but I'm trying to encourage you to, to learn UX. And this is a really nice quote, which summarizes my intention. 
So knowing more about UI design will make you a better developer. But that, that doesn't mean you should be responsible for UI design. And there is another quote. So if we want to have our product sec to be successful, we just have to focus on the user side because user doesn't care what's underneath, what's the technology. He or she wants to use cool app with a really nice design which works seamlessly. So code is executed on a machine, and we all know it, but the interaction design is executed on a human. Okay, so I owe you a definition what UX is. So user experience has many definitions, but my own is that this is like a glue between human area and technology. And you can have your own definitions. It can be like a bridge between human and technology, but you should all remember that user experience is not only about user interface. It's you know, not only about colors, it's not only about placing the elements, it's much more deeper. So we have many, many, many different areas of UX. We've got information architecture, content strategy, and interaction design, research, user interface design, usability, and we have them even more. And you might start thinking, what? All these people work on like simple app, but believe me, if we like get rid of some of them, we will soon realize that your beloved app is like something like a crap, right? So how the UX process looks like. It depends on the project, it depends on the environment you work with, it depends how many designers are engaged in the project, but basically it starts with research. So this is the stage where you get insight into the domain, you start talking with the potential users, with the client, and to give you an example, um, in my previous company I was creating an app for biotechnologists which was really tough for me because I had no idea about this domain at all. And we spent really many hours on talking with the users, getting to know the, their domain, how they work in a lab, because everything had later impact how the, the app looked like. So when we are happy with the research and we, have, and we gathered a lot of information, we go to concept. So during this stage, we meet with our client, with uh, other people from our team, and we start uh, like brainstorming. So thinking about the vision for the product, we start thinking about the directions we should go, and so on and so forth. And the next one, my favorite one, so prototyping. And it's not only about Photoshop. Uh, so when you gather already all the information, and when you know more or less what you want to design, you pick up a you know, piece of paper and a pen and start drawing this, sketching. And it is very important to start with a paper and not with a Photoshop because you're more creative when you're drawing something. And there are lo-fi and hi-fi prototypes. Lo-fi, you can create it in, for example, balsamic mockups. You probably, some of you know this, this software, which is very easy to use. So you grab like a components which are current colorful and you just align them on the, um, on the board. But there are also hi-fi prototypes. When you're already satisfied with, uh, with your initial prototype, you can later use Photoshop, use colors, you can cater for a typography, and so on and so forth. And it's very important to test your prototypes uh, with the users. So you can do it like um, in a parallel mode. So you can design something and you may not be sure whether it's correctly designed. So you can go to the users and ask them, what do you think about it? And when, they, uh, when they're not satisfied, like when, they, it's not when it's not very intuitive, you can go back to prototyping and you can start you know, creating things again. Okay, so now I'd like to uh, present you a couple of methods which I should think you can use during your work, and I um, encourage you to do this. So the first one uh, is creative workshops. So what is it all about? Uh, so this is like a meeting with other people from your team who are going to create a product, and it's organized at the very beginning, and um, 
it lets you to get insight into the project's domain. You meet other people within your team, and it's extremely important to meet people in person. I know that some of you probably work remotely, and yeah, there are many advantages of that, but uh, really believe me that after I met people, uh, after like two months of the project, I met people in person. After that, the project looked look totally differently. I mean, we're more open. We're more open to give a feedback and, um, and find better solutions. So to give you an example, in my previous company, um, the team of designers were responsible for creating the app, internal app, uh, to reserve, like to book rooms in the office. And what they do was the creative workshop. So they gather all the mobile developers from the office. They give them pieces of paper and pens, colorful pens and post-its. And they ask them to design the app. And what had occurred that design that developers had like huge fun. They created something uh, what was uh, worthy. So later, all their prototypes were transferred to the final design. So everyone ha was happy because developers could got, get the insight into UX world, and designers were happy because they showed them that it's crucial, it's important. And I really liked Emanuela's talk uh, yesterday because she said that designers should educate other people from the team about the design. And I think that if you have designers in your team or in your company, just talk to them, maybe they can organize something uh, like that. And the other thing, it's sketching. And I know it's strange that I'm talking to you about sketching, but very often we forget about pen and paper and we start using words which are like, you know, have um, two meanings. And uh, it's better just to talk with designers in their natural language, which is visual language. So, um, yeah, we all know that pictures mean more than words, so start using it. And uh, whenever you have doubts that interface is not like properly designed by designers, just grab a piece of paper, go to him or her, and start drawing and talking about it. And now I prepared exercise for you. Do you have papers and pens? If not, I can give you some. Like, I know there are many of them, but just like share it. Okay. I if you can share with people who doesn't have. I just have to take my phone. Okay. I think that we're ready. Are we ready? You can do it also with your neighbor if you don't have a pen. And okay. So, okay, but please be quiet for a while. So before you start, I just have to a short story. So, a couple of days ago, I was planning my trip to Milan, and I want to be a really well-organized person, so um, I decided to book a ticket uh, online from uh, Bergamo, where I landed, to Milano. And um, yeah, I found this Oreo Shadow website, which looks outdated, um, but well, leave it. And um, yeah, so I, I saw the form, I started filling in it, uh, okay, my name, and later I saw address field, and I was like, well, why do they need it for? I'm not sure, and you know, Michael uh, has um, had a presentation yesterday about designing for trust, and this website is really not trustworthy, so I decided to skip the address field because, you know, I don't want to leave all my data on the internet, and yeah, and I, you know, filled the email field, and proceed, so I click next. And this is what I got, this super fancy flat notification. <laughs> and it was, please insert your address. And I was like, what, I'm tired, it's late night. And I was really annoyed by this. I have to tell you something, that forms are the worst like, things in the UX world ever. Users hate forms. You have to learn how to design this. 
it's not a piece of cake. You may think, well, a couple of inputs and labels, well, bah, it's done, but it's not like that. And if you want to explore more in this topic, I really recommend you a book from Luke Wrublewski. And there's a really, yeah, actually, this is really interesting. I'm kind of obsessed with forms. So um, you have to really be, be careful uh, how the form look like, looks like and what are the information uh, required. So your task now is to redesign this stupid form uh, to make it more user friendly and to make me believe that they won't steal my data. You've got three minutes, which starts now. Uh, oh yeah, sure, sure, sorry. Uh, this should be like on a web, or it could be mobile, it could be for website, as you wish. Just do it. Yeah, you can make two assumptions. One, that the address is really needed for my verification, but make it more like the, the whole form more trustworthy. And the second, you can assume that address is not needed, so you can get rid of this. The first one is more tougher to solve, so. If you're ambitious, you can choose the first one. Okay, one minute left. Thirty seconds. <coughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop, please. So um, you can take now a minute and share your design with the neighbor so you can check out the different vision and the different approach. <laughs> can I take a photo of you with this design? I'll just... You can, you can draw it, you can draw it, just like... <laughs> Okay, 20 seconds.
<laughs> yeah, this is finished. Okay, so now you can like have the feeling what the designers, UX designers life look like. Um, okay, so I owe you the, the solution, but before that, is there anyone who, want to, who wants to share with me uh, his or her design? I have small rewards. Yeah, okay. I, I won't be you know, showing to anybody, don't worry. <laughs> so I have something like small set from Adobe, like this, and the stickers. And anyone? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let me see. Just pay. Whoa, it, interesting. Okay, you have a note. Uh, yeah, you want to bag it? Or maybe later? No? Okay. So I owe you the, the solution. Of course, there is not like one ideal, uh, but I will explain you why I designed this like that. So uh, first of all, I got rid of these two columns which were here because you know having two columns is really bad because user has to jump like first okay I see I see I see and then oh gosh another column so it is very bad I know that sometimes form are um, forms are really long but it's really better to place them vertically like here okay so a user can easily scan the labels so he or she can instantly know what is required and what should be done. And the next thing is marking the obligatory fields or required fields. It's extremely important. And you have uh, like two options. You can mark the required fields with a star or like sign uh, or by color, but be aware that colors may be misled with the validation because sometimes very often when there are errors in validation, it's marked by red. Uh, so it can be done like that, but it can be uh, done, for example, that you mark only the uh, optional fields. If there are, like, we have the case that almost all fields are required, so you can give an info, all fields are obligatory or required, and the uh, uh, one with a gray asterisk is optional, or you can write it in here that this is optional. And the second thing uh, is giving the information why they need my address because it's not very intuitive oh you made it cool uh, because it's not very uh, like straightforward at first because I book ticket for bus I uh, I don't want to have it sent it to me so I don't know why my address is needed but the best thing is to just get rid of the address field because yeah as I said it's not usual to gather this data and there is different approach uh, where you can um, uh, place the labels under inputs so it's, it, it can be quickly scanned or you can put it before them so you uh, save space on the inter interface but your user uh, path uh, is like not very straightforward so it's like you have to read here and then go here and then, 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 then but it's, you know, from all these three examples, so this, um, this, and this one on the right, these two are, of course, the more, the most user-friendly. Okay, so I hope that you like the exercise. If you want to explore more, or if you want to learn how to like have user experience in your pers perspective, I really recommend you to visit UX Stack Exchange. So developers have Stack Overflow and designers, UX designers have their own website. And there are, yeah, so, I sorry. I, I also put the zip code on top because you can extract the CTM state. Yeah, the yeah, that's right. If you, you know, if you uh, can, like in mm, guess something automatically, uh, just do it. Just save the you know the the work of typing for the users. Okay, so uh, on the UX uh, Stack Exchange, you will find many uh, freaks in terms of user experience. So they will probably help you with all your problems, <coughs> uh, with the problems with the forms. So whenever you have to design something and you don't have designers on board. 
uh, don't hesitate, place there your prototype, your mocap, and you will get, you know, uh, thousands of opinions uh, about it. Okay, so the next method I would like to present you is card sorting. So if you redesign a huge portal, or if you're not sure whether the navigation is easy to use, and the user com users complain that it's tough to find a piece of information on your website, it's time for doing card sorting. So whenever you, your users are lost in the navigation, or you want to improve your information architecture on the website, uh, please use it. So what is it all about? Uh, you ask potential users or your friends uh, to group the uh, information and later name the group. So you can uh, s easily structure your whole navigation. So on the post-its or on the cards, you write the, um, the notions that are crucial for the website and later users start like sorting this, grouping this uh, in a like, logical way. And later if you gather the data, you can have like more or less user-friendly navigation. And there are many online tools. There was really cool tool wh which was called Concept Codify. Uh, and unfortunately, it's uh, not longer available. It was for free, but now it's bought by other company. But there is Optimal Workshops and they have quite cheap uh, accounts. And uh, after such a study, which is uh, held online, so you just pass the link to the users and they can quickly just by drag and drop the, the, the small like pieces of paper, let's say, they can uh, create you a navigation. And what is cool about that you get very scientific vision of this. So whenever you want to discuss it with designers or clients and want to boast off that you know UX stuff, you can just bring it on, bring this similarity matrix to show that, well, I think that uh, users uh, showed us that these notions should be in one group because have almost 100% of similarity. So it's more scientific, but really interesting. And uh, let's imagine now a situation that you finish the development, that everything is done, and you're just before the launch of the product. And everyone is excited. You can feel the smell of the success in the air. You know, champagne is in the glasses. but you can see the users and they are you know kind of skeptical what's more they don't want to use your app and this is a nightmare and happens very often that you know everyone's so excited yeah we're going to create a product and later on it dies because very often people try to solve artificial solutions they don't talk to people and it's really bad so remedy for this are uh, is uh, Gilera tests sorry, gorilla test. So this is kind of tool which I really like. And um, whenever you create something, whether it's initial version or something very advanced, just grab your computer or print the user interface or take your, your drawing and come to users or you know come to colleagues uh, which are sitting next to you and start talking with them. I mean, uh, give them the forms or ask them to uh, start filling in it. So you will see instantly what's wrong and you will get feedback very quickly. And if you don't like to talk with strangers, which I totally understand because I don't, uh, don't like test my designs with you know, people grabbed on the street, you can just go you know, to a lady uh, at the reception desk in your office or you can go to your family or friends and Research-led design, yeah, is the holy grain of design. So we should have in mind that in the end, the user is our own boss, and he or she decides whether our app will be successful or not. And a couple of uh, advices for you. So there is Jeff Atwood, co-founder of Stack Overflow, very important person, and he said, you need developers to see users using their application and any difficulties users have. So yeah, he just said that you should just uh, close your computers and start talking with people and start observing them and see the pain points of your application. And there are another pieces of advice from him. So three pieces of advice. Have developers observe actual users, do the Galeras test, have them share help desk duties, 
collaborate with each other, talk with designers, buy everybody a copy of Don't Make Me Think. This is a very famous book by Steve Crock, which is really cool and I really recommend you to read it. Uh, in terms of literature for people who want to start in UX, I really recommend Design of Everyday Object Thing. Everyday yeah, things. things. Everyday Things, sorry. By Don Norman. He's a guru in user experience. And seriously, after uh, when I read this book, I start uh, looking at different things from the different angle. It's really, really interesting. Okay, so you may now think now, well, UX is not for me, it's totally not my ball, it's totally not my, you know, comfort zone. <laughs> but later on, you will find it something very comfy, and you feel good with this, and you start, when you start working with designers, you start see the, like, the different perspective for your product. And again, think product, not features. Okay, thank you. Feel, like, think overall, feel, uh, think about the product as a whole, think about your users. And uh, a couple of buzzwords. So step out of your comfort zone. Come to designer team, start talking with them. Maybe, they, you, maybe you can organize like, uh, yeah, creative workshops at the beginning of the project. Maybe you can conduct a card sorting. Uh, or do Galeras test together. Broaden your horizon. So this is, this is uh, there is one very famous um, word now. So T-shaped person. So you have your own specialization, but you s kind of start exploring other areas uh, within your profession. And UX is definitely there. Again, in get insight into design process, because uh, I believe that Everyone, uh, sooner or later, has to work with designer and contribute. Like, if you have your opinion, if you feel that designer um, doesn't fulfill his her job, just go and speak up. And whenever you're stuck with uh, creating a prototype, <laughs> don't forget about designers, don't forget about UX Stack Exchange. You can get out of this hole and you can find a perfect solution for your problem. Thank you. This was all. Uh, okay, so we have a couple of minutes for the questions. I don't know. So many. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I will. I, yeah. Silver back. Yeah. So there is a one recommendation from designer. So Emanuela recommends to use silver back, yeah, yeah so for nice conducting a test uh, when you're a Mac user. Super good. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so there is, uh, uh, the, the question was about the book for uh, learning how to design forms. Let me check the, the title. Uh, the author is Luke Wrublewski. It's L-U-K, maybe I can, he's a guru in user experience, especially in mobile. He's really, really cool. He works with Google. And I really recommend you to follow him. And he's the creator of this uh, mobile-first approach. And the book, well, I don't, I don't uh, remember the, the, to the topic, the subject, but the title, but it's something about forms. <laughs> so you'll definitely find it, because he has um, many publications. And he also has uh, videos on YouTube, how to design forms on mobile in collaboration with Intel. So strongly recommend to watch it. Any other questions? Yes? Do you think that uh, maybe if the, uh, the sample is a form, no? Do you think that sometimes putting the set step into steps and can, can, be, uh, can help people not to, be, to reach the end of the uh, Yeah, definitely. Uh, the question was whether when the forms are really long, whether it's good to split them into two steps, for example. Yeah, it's good approach, especially when you can 
uh, like group information. So the first one, uh, personal information, and the second one, uh, account information or pricing information or whatever. Yeah, but uh, don't split very short forms because it's, it looks a little bit awkward. So yeah, whenever the form is long, you can, you can think about splitting in into a couple of steps. But uh, remember to show users how many steps uh, are in the form and on the which you currently are. Any other questions? Like one minute, maybe? No? So thank you. Thank you.